This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. It is a football Friday presented by Abundance Energy. As we get you ready for Texas Tech in Kansas tomorrow morning, Optimum Game Day Live coverage begins at 7 a.m. with a Saturday morning quarterback to recap in the ball games from last night and then tonight. Uh, tonight for our uh, friendship game, our coverage begins at 6.30, the kick from El Paso at 7 o'clock tonight, and then we'll have Friday Night Live after that with uh, scores. And, of course, you can keep up to date with scores on the high school fan zone. Just go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank for that, and you'll see uh, the high school fan Fan zone page, and you can uh, keep up with scores as they, um, as they not necessarily as they happen, but while the games are in progress. Uh, for instance, Ida lose tonight in um, in Canyon. They'll play at Happy State Bank Stadium against uh, Lynx out of uh, Spearman. And then uh, also tonight, uh, Slayton is uh, facing Shallow Water. That'll be at Lowry Field. That kick tonight is at 7 o'clock. Littlefield against uh, Canadian at Dick Bevins tonight in uh, Amarillo. Also tonight, uh, Roosevelt will play at Younger Field, Jamie, in Tulia. Younger. Against the Friona Chieftains. Okay. Uh, Sweetwater uh, will face uh, Godley, not necessarily an area team. They'll play at Gordon Wood Stadium in Brownwood. Uh, over tonight at uh, Lubbock Cooper at the Pirates Place, Fort Stockton and Perryton will play. If you want to see a game over there tonight, Childress and Abernathy. Will play in Floydata and then uh, Tahoka and uh, Panhandle will also play today at Happy State Bank Stadium there in Canyon. That uh, early game that I told you about is a four o'clock game. Idaho plays at four, and then um, the late game with Tahoka is at seven thirty tonight. So those are among the games uh, taking place this weekend. All right, uh, Red Raider football with Joey McGuire last night. And uh, he was, uh, I think, in good spirits. They uh, take on Kansas tomorrow. I've got uh, copious notes from the program last night. A couple of funny things. And well, just some, I don't know if we have anything totally new, but I'll, 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 I'll throw it out there and see what you think. Okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, he says uh, Baron Morton is uh, close to 100%. Not there, but close. Felt like against TCU that he operated the offense very efficiently. Uh, Coach McGuire felt said that Baron Morton felt like he left 14 points out there, that there were a couple of passes that he didn't make. You know, there was one that he, he waited on somebody, and if he did, or he went too early, if he'd waited like a split second longer, he would have had an open receiver and there had been a touchdown. So it felt like that there was 14 points that he left out there. But he said that, just having him at practice and the energy that he brings has been has been very good, and that he brings it vocally too. Good. Okay. Uh, he said that the he's a coach's kid. It's fun to see, uh, but uh, he said that uh, one of the things that he has done is that he has avoided turnovers, and he said last year going in to camp that he turned it over the most. And this year, he turned it over the least. He didn't offer specific numbers, but just, you know, talked about his growth and said that he had turned it over in camp the least. It's interesting and always that we had heard that he was the guy who didn't take care of the football, and that's why Tyler Shuck was starting in front of him. Yeah, I know. I had that that same thought going through my mind. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. And he didn't offer specific numbers or anything like that. He just does make you wonder. Well, then why was he? <laughs> uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. He uh, talked about uh, Taj Brooks uh, going over 1,000 yards uh, on the year in, uh, in rushing and uh, brought it up in the post game with his team. Uh, he, he said, Coach McGuire said, that all Taj Brooks wants to do is win, that he's being rewarded uh, for his hard work. Uh, did not offer numbers on this, but offered this tidbit. Said that Taj Brooks leads the nation in missed tackles. Well, they got to work on him tackling better then. Well, but 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 I think the point was is that 
avoiding, you know, avoiding escaping from tackles. Really, I know. That was... Really important. That was, that was funny. That was funny. Mm. Um, yeah, sure. No, it was. It was funny. Um, and he said they're going to count on him for that on Saturday. Okay. That he, uh, to, for him to, uh, to, to avoid those tackles. Um, I'm apologize on my little field, little field so, deal. Apparently they played last night and lost. So sorry about you. So he leads the country in forcing missed tackles. I guess so. I guess that's maybe a better way to put it. He didn't use that term, but he said missed tackles, maybe eluding tackles, you know, eluding tackles would be a good one, you know, yeah. uh, yeah. Escaping from tackles, you know, something. breaking tackles, breaking tackles, right? Yeah. All those, all those, all those, all those things. Uh, somebody said this nice dad joke, Jamie. Bullfighter went right over his head. Doesn't take much to get over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and you still didn't use "sorry about you" in a correct way. Yeah. Yeah. And you are still yeah. using it, even though you said you were going to stop. Now twice, no, it's, mm-hmm. it's become a bit of a crutch for me. A, mm. a bad crutch, a broken crutch. What? Saying mm. that you're going to stop using it or using it incorrectly? Using it incorrectly. Okay, well, let's yeah. use the other one instead where you stop using yeah. it. That might be a better crutch. Yeah. Uh, one of the things he, he talked about with regard to Baron Morton, he talked about how he's a coach's kid. And it, it's funny because this is this is my perception of James Morton. I do not know him well. I've not been to one of his practices, so I don't know how he conducts his practices. But... If you were to ask me, I would tell you that my perception of James Morton is he's a pretty soft, talk, soft, mild mannered guy. Just when you're talking to him, just humble, um, kind of a soft talker. Now he may be very vocal in in the locker room or vocal uh, on the field with his players, and that and that's all well and good. But he, he, to to me, he's not your typical coach that you meet when you're just talking to him. And for years, uh, I would see Coach Morton on the east side, even way before a Baron ever would play here. When he was coaching here, you know, I'd always, I, I just, I would always generally run into him at halftime. We just <clears throat> exchanged pleasantries, okay? But one of apparently one of Coach Morton's uh, phrases to Baron with regard to quarterback is, you know, be needy, not greedy. <laughs> you know, with regard to his teammates, in in not being too greedy with trying to you know, force the ball in there. Be needy, not greedy. Okay. Okay. But anyway, it was just, it was interesting to me when Coach McGuire was talking about how vocal Barron is on the practice field and with his teammates. I was like, man, that, that seems kind of opposite of what his old man is. Mm, okay. Okay. That, that was, that, that's kind of, that was just my, that was just kind of my thought. Um, and you may, folks that are, that have played for Coach Morton or know him better than I do, um, may may dispute that or may have a different view of that but that's just that's just my view uh this was i thought this was kind of interesting the um the person that heads up the houston rodeo uh called uh, coach mcguire and she apparently is a red raider and for the houston rodeo she wants to use the saddle uh that they captured from tcu in the battle for the saddle and ride that out to begin the by all houston means rodeo. Yeah. use it yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. He said it's a heavy saddle, but that um, I think they're going to do that. That they're going to do that. Um, he said with regard to Baron Morton, his, he's got a lot of zip on the ball, the same as last week, and that he just gives uh, energy to the team. So, Is it a leather saddle or is it a metal saddle? Okay, so the, the battle for the saddle, I think, is a leather saddle. It's just heavy. Right. The saddle that you're thinking of is the iron saddle that the players touch. No, I'm thinking of the trophy that we trade okay. between Tech and TCU. I, I I, thought that was a metal saddle, too. I thought they were both metal. Okay. But he said that the iron saddle that you used to see that they would touch as they yeah. were c- coming out for... That, that's not the one we're talking about. I know, but I was going to tell you something on that. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna relocate that one um, down to the south end zone next year. Where the so, guys come out of the tunnel. Where the guys then. come out of the tunnel. And so that, that that saddle has been saved and they'll use that and that'll be part of the you know pregame tradition of coming out when they come out uh in the south end zone, they're behind the goalposts. So a couple of saddle talk 
things from last night. Exciting. <laughs> Saddle up. Let's go. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Morning thoughts, comments, Yates Morning Center chat line. Uh, we got this one 20 minutes, 23 minutes ago now. Did Chuck say Pecos over in New Mexico? I did. I thought it was in Texas. Oh. Is it not? Okay, well, I, mean, I, I guess I'm wrong. I, I saw that and went, yeah, I did say that. I did say that. Maybe Pecos is... I think Pecos know. is in Texas. Okay, well, uh, city in Texas, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not over in New Mexico. <laughs> uh, it may be close to the state line, maybe. Hell, I don't know. It just when it said Pecos, it said, that sounded like a New it Mexico. It kind of looks, it kind of sounds like a sounded, New Mexico sounded city. like a New Mexico town. I'll, I'll agree with that. Yeah, so, I mean, that just, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, they're not relying on me for, yeah, it's actually nowhere, nowhere near uh, New Mexico. It's uh, south of, kind of southwest of uh, Odessa, so looking, looking on, well, it's close. I mean, it's close. There's the next... The, it's, it's just one state over. Well, the so. next state over is uh, country, uh, New Mexico. <laughs> okay. And it's close to New Mexico. I mean, New Mexico is to the north, and then, you know, Mexico itself is, you keep keep on the road, keep on that road, you'll, you'll get there eventually. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this is good news. I renewed my Texas Tech uh, baseball tickets yesterday. This from a texter. I wish I could go to the Red and Black Series, but getting ready for a California train trip to see our new grandson, Leo. He's a big boy, 10 pounds, 5 ounces. Welcome, Leo. He may be 6'6 or something, maybe a Division One athlete. Hey, keep dreaming. You never know. You put a ball in his hand, right? That's all right. The uh, Red Black Series, they announced that yesterday. That's going to be next week. Is that correct? Mm, I think that's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that... So is that something that's on your on your radar pretty pretty heavy, or just kind of go see see how the boys are batting the ball around, throwing sure. it around a little bit? Sure. Okay. Um, I want to get to some uh, other Big Twelve games, but I did want to share this from last night. I may share this more than once today because I thought it was pretty funny and 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 accurate uh, from Red Raider football with uh, Joey McGuire last night. He uh, he revealed that his wife said this to him, Joey. You got to win some games because I really love this place. <laughs> apparently, I'm glad she likes to hear that. Apparently, good. she's as harsh as critic. She's, he's, he said she really loves living here. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> but you got to win some games, <laughs> man. That's that's pressure, you know. You 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 got all this other pressure around you, you know, and you know trying to. Make sure everybody's on the same page and recruiting and winning and do I go for it on fourth and two for my own thirty two and then I get home and my wife's like, You gotta win some ball games, man, because I really like living here. <laughs> I think that's pressure. <laughs> um, I think we all have pressure a little bit, right? To keep our jobs, to keep our wives sure, happy. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So he's no different than the rest of us. Yeah. I mean, yours claims to be lucky, so she's just when he, whatever happens, I, it happens, and she's great with it. I have, uh, yeah. I have maybe a little bit different for the rest I, of us. I've brainwashed her into thinking that she's lucky. Oh, we know she is. <laughs> yeah, we, we know she is. Know. Uh, Chuck, have you never heard of Pecos Bill from Tall Tales? Rode a tornado from New Mexico to Texas. Um, no, sorry, I have not. Sorry, I have not. Uh, top 25 college football last night. Number 11, Louisville, comes back and beats Virginia 31-24. to Scary moment in that game as a Virginia player went down. If you saw the game, um, apparently uh, the young man has uh, regained um, and is, was able to move his um, extremities. Uh, but there was a, a very hard hit to the Virginia tailback, Parrish Jones, Late in the game, he caught a pass, uh, fumbled. Uh, he was hit on the helmet uh, after he fumbled after being hit on the helmet by uh, the Cardinal safety Cameron Kelly. Uh, then Malik Washington, who was right there for uh, Louisville, picked up the ball, or yeah, no, for Virginia, picked up the ball and goes in for a touchdown. And so they led twenty-one to fourteen 
at the half, but they would come back to uh, to lose. Uh, but a Virginia spokesman saying that he had regained movement and all of his extremities would remain hospitalized overnight. Goodness gracious, that's uh, that's good, good news. But you know, for uh, Virginia, they ended up losing the ball game, thirty-one to twenty-four. Virginia now two and eight. Louisville three and one, and this game was in uh, was in Louisville last night. Okay. Uh, so Big 12 football this weekend, Jamie, aside from uh, Texas Tech and Kansas, what game, and I'll give you the games here in just one second, has your eye uh, this weekend? Is it TCU, Texas? Is it um, Oklahoma at West Virginia? Would Oklahoma lose a, a third game on the year? Is it uh, K-State Baylor? I think it's significantly less exciting than yeah, last week, which no doubt. Was, I thought was terrific. Mm-hmm. And and really, that turned out to be just as good as we had hoped for. Oh man, Chuck! Um, I, those ones that you just mentioned, it feels like all blowouts, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think West Virginia is going to give Oklahoma a battle. Um, Oklahoma's favored by thirteen on the road. Mm-hmm. That's a six o'clock game in I uh, think, Morgantown. I don't think Baylor's going to have anything for the Wildcats in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma State at UCF just. Don't see that happening. It seems yeah. like Oklahoma State playing really well right now. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe Cincinnati and Houston is the most uh, evil or, or even, I should say. Well, even. BYU and Iowa State, well, they'll play in Ames, um, and that's a nine fifteen nine fifteen kick. That's that's not in Ames. That's in is it, oh, Provo. Okay, well, I'm just I'm okay. Well, then they they have it. Yeah, that's correct. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, anyway, yeah, uh, so that, that would make a little more sense. That makes yeah, makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah. Both both those teams are five and four, so somebody's going to get bowl eligible. Yeah, yeah. So maybe those two games are the ones that I think will be the most entertaining. I don't. I mean, I don't, I think Texas will roll TCU. Yeah, I would agree with you. Is this a little Pecos bill here? Yeah. So <laughs> last week was so good. I mean, was, so many good right. matchups. Even right. matchups, even like the. I mean, like the Baylor Houston one that probably nobody watched right. ended up being a great, great game. I just don't feel like there's even this weekend. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know that I get my contract renewed with the lucky lady. I woke up in my house this morning. Um, I never got an official proclamation, so I don't know if it's still pending or not. I got a lot of things pending right now, so maybe maybe it's still up for debate. Uh, but I, I, I think I think so. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. We'll have Friendship Tiger football on the air for you tonight, 6.30, the broadcast time, 7 o'clock play-by-play. Friday night live after the ball game tonight. Get you up to date on all the other playoff games that are going on in and around the area. Lubbock Cooper winning last night over El Paso Parkland, 67-7. to This is a beatdown. That would be an understatement. <laughs> okay, okay, and you hope that uh, friendship has uh, you know a happy ride home uh, tonight after their game against uh, Eastwood uh, down in El Paso. So uh, look forward to that. And you can follow again scores along uh, throughout the night tonight uh, by going to the Double T ninety seven three mobile app presented by Happy State Bank and checking out the high school fan zone page. All right, let me give you just a little bit of history between these two teams, Texas Tech. Uh, leads the series 22 to 2. Now, here's what one thing that I've always found interesting. In 1965, in a game that was played here in Lubbock at Jones Stadium, Red Raiders won that game 26 to 7. Two things occurred in that game. One, the game was called 56 seconds into the fourth quarter because of strong winds, heavy rain, and a tornado alert. And some would tell you mm. that, that they saw a funnel cloud. Um, but the other thing that happened is that was the first ever college football game to use instant replay. How about that? Mm-hmm. So we have that game to blame for instant replay or to praise for instant replay, depending on how you look at it. I don't blame it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So those are, that's the only two times you've lost. Uh, October the 6th of 2001, that was in overtime here in Lubbock. And then in 2019... Um, the uh, just the the, the blowing a thirteen point lead and uh, the Jayhawks getting a, a game winning field goal at the end of regulation when it 
you thought it was going to be headed to uh, to overtime, but that's not, that was not the case. Um, I know that you're interested in this. I want to give this to you because the Red Raiders are going to wear white, white, and white tomorrow. Well, that's a good look. Yeah, it is a good look. I, I think it's a real clean look. 11 and 7 is when you wear the white, white, and white. Okay? And then on November 11th, the Red Raiders have won five of their last six games. The only loss was in 06. Fell at Oklahoma, then ranked uh, 17th. The Sooners were 34 to 24. Otherwise, you have a win over Baylor, you have a win over Okie State, you win over TCU in 95, and TCU in 89, and TCU in 78. Why aren't we playing TCU? In fact, man, you played TCU a bunch on November 11th. In addition to uh, those years, lost in 72, lost in 67, and lost in 50 and 44. That's a lot of games against one team on on a date. On a certain date, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know that you were. I w- we're waiting for that for that intel. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this, because here's where I think the game is going to be. The team that does this better, I think, wins the game. Kansas coming into this game rushes for about 198 yards a game. The Red Raiders rush for 173 yards a game. I think the team that has the higher rushing total wins the game. Uh, I mean, I think it's very well possible. It just depends on how much the difference is. I mean, if it's a yard or two, I don't think that's yeah a okay major factor. But if one is eighty to a hundred yards more than the other, then yeah, I would be really shocked to see that team lose the game. Be- because I think I think what's going to happen is is that the the Red Raiders want to they want to establish the run. They want Taj Brooks to have the ball in his hands, but then they want to use that to be able to open up some other things, whether that's play action over the middle or being able to go deep down the sides or maybe some jet sweeps or things along those lines. And I think Kansas is in a similar boat with Devin Neal. The other thing, though, too, is you have to contend with their quarterback, with Jason Bean. So, you know, they've got a, they got a quarterback that can run. they got a running back that can run. they got a quarterback that can throw. But I think... His tendency to get picked off is more so than Baron Morton's. Yeah, he's not as good of a thrower as Morton is, but he's way more explosive as a runner than Baron is. Yeah. So you've got to figure out a way to contain contain those two guys. But I think I think if the numbers are flipped, like let's say, I think if Tech has 200, okay, yards rushing, and KU has, let's just say, less 175. Let's just say they put them at 175. I think I think the Red Raiders win the football game. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's possible. I wouldn't, still wouldn't guarantee it. I mean, you'd still have to, you know, how you doing in the passing game? Sure. Are, you, are you having a normal day, a decent day throwing the football too? And are you not turning the ball over all mm-hmm. those things? Yeah, I think because those are big factors as be, well. Like they are, I mean, when the turnover, when you talk about turnovers, that's mm-hmm. every single football game. You can, you can mention that every single time. So when you look at passing, uh, Tech throws it about 237 yards a game. Man, that seems so pedestrian compared to what we're used to. And that's good for ninth in the Big 12. Kansas is at 236, and that's good for 10th in the Big 12. Uh, then when you look at rush defense, um, Texas Tech's rush defense in the Big 12 is better than Kansas. Uh, the Red Raiders average giving up 141 yards a game. Kansas, 164 yards a game. That's good for 10th. Texas Tech is seventh. Yeah, I don't think that um, – I don't, I don't look at the Kansas defense and say you're not going to be able to score or anything like that. I think mm-hmm. both both running the football and throwing the football, you should you should be able to move the ball up and down the field. It's just a matter of can your defense get enough stops um, that uh, give you a chance to, to kind of keep up with a high-powered Kansas offense – and and also I I think that you know you mentioned the running part of it and I think the running part of it is massive because uh, you want to try to keep them off the field I think you want to you want to make this game you know a game where there's not a ton of possessions I think the lower scoring the game is the more that benefits the Red Raiders the higher scoring it is uh, that flips the advantage to the Jayhawks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another thing, putting pressure on the quarterback. Both both teams have, well, Texas Tech has suffered more than Kansas. Kansas is fourth in the Big 12, a little over two sacks a game, and 
and uh, the Red Raiders are under two. But the big thing for Texas Tech tomorrow is you're going to have Steve Linton back. So it may not be so much of sacking the quarterback, but maybe putting pressure on the quarterback, or maybe forcing him to do something he doesn't necessarily want to do. But and the the thing about the thing about their quarterback though is is we talk about the escapability of Taj Brooks and missing tackles and eluding and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Jason Bean can do that. In yeah, space. he's not afraid to throw the ball to the other team. So just keep him in the pocket and force him to throw. Don't let him tuck and run. Yeah, he's not afraid to throw the ball to the other team. <laughs> what? I mean, it's true. He's it's true. He's got he's he's had a had a tendency to do that. Uh, in the turnover margin, here's the thing that's unfortunate: uh, the Red Raiders are 12th in the Big 12 in turnover margin. They've got to figure out a way to get some turnovers. Well, how much of that was when you were playing a true freshman at quarterback? Could these numbers was, get? That was a huge. Yeah, these these numbers. What did get you have? Skewed eight turnovers in six quarters when he was your starting quarterback. Yeah, it's a it's a big number. It's a big number. That, yeah, that, that's a massive number. It's a massive number. Okay, yeah. it's it's a massive. It is a massive number. Um, but it, so it's kind of it kind of it kind of skews things a little bit. Seven twenty three this morning here on the morning drive. Take your thoughts, comments, score predictions if you want. Um, on the, the Yates Flooring Center chat line, go to double dot com for that or the mobile app. And the Visual Edge IT hotline is open as well. Uh, let's see this. Salute from Spain. Hope Tech does well this weekend. Reckon. Wow. Hope that, uh, you, as Jamie said, your travels go well. Yeah. Guns up, but don't yell that in the airport if you see a fellow Red Raider. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest that. Great way to get new bracelets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, This, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, Sonia here. Today is Sweet Cheek's birthday. That's her husband. Uh, The Marine Corps' birthday. And we celebrate Veterans Day tomorrow. He was in the Navy. I was in the Army. Wreck him. Thank you for your service. Thank you, both of you. Yes, absolutely. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time now for Jamie's question of the day on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. All right, guys, as we look at our friendly, lovely Big 12 standings at this point, you have mm-hmm. Texas and Oklahoma State on top of the conference at 5-1. and one. I want you to tell me if you think they will play in the conference championship game and whether or not you say yay or nay. I want you to tell me who you think has the best chance to knock one of them out of the conference title tilt. Okay. All right. So I don't think, uh, I don't think Oklahoma state's going to play for the title. I think it's going to be somebody else. I think Texas will play for the title. I think your other candidates are KU, Oklahoma and K state. Uh, I'm going to say this. The winner of KUK State will play for the uh, Big 12 title game against Texas. So I think Oklahoma's going to get another loss. Oklahoma State or Oklahoma's going to get another loss? Both of them. Okay. If Oklahoma State lost once and whichever Kansas or Kansas State won out, they still have the tiebreaker. They have the same record and yeah, the tiebreaker. Tiebreak. So I didn't really think that very through very well. Very, th- I didn't think that through very well. Because Oklahoma State State owns the state of Kansas. Yeah. Right. They beat them both. Right. And if Oklahoma State and Oklahoma have the same record, Oklahoma State, by virtue of their win over Oklahoma in the Bedlam game, they would they would go as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That Oklahoma State schedule to finish with is pretty swish cheesy. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, again just didn't really quite a th- didn't think before I spoke there because uh, they finish at UCF, um, which is this week, and then they finish at Houston, which is next week, and then they play the Saturday after Thanksgiving against BYU. Yeah, uh, Jamie, I think it's going to be Texas and Oklahoma State upon further review. That will play for the Big 12 title. Okay. And you don't know who who's the most likely to take over? Who is the most likely? Um, well, because if they stumble, if Oklahoma State stumble, and, and Texas could stumble too, right? I mean, they, 
it's not likely at this point. I mean, they're they're allowed to lose a couple of games. Um, if K State had, I'm going to say K State. I, I think it could be Texas and K State again. I think K State is the best team. Yeah. with with two losses. Yeah, I don't I I don't disagree with that. All right, Jeff. All right, so we've eliminated. I, I think we've locked in Oklahoma State. Uh, I I don't see them getting a loss to knock them out of it. That might be the two seat, but I think they've locked in their playoff chance, uh, you know, the championship game chance. So then I look at Texas, and unless they just fall apart, unless they completely days. fall apart, yeah, and, and I don't see that happening yeah, right, with who they have left. So that that leads us to the other team that's mentioned here. And that's the University of Texas. Yeah, I'm right here with Jeff. Okay, so if it, I think you have to assume Oklahoma State is in. Yeah. I think Texas is the team because Oklahoma State would have to lose twice, really, mm-hmm. to get bounced. Okay. Okay. Texas could lose just once and get bounced, right? And you look at this. By their, who? And that's where you look at it. They've uh-huh. got, they're at TCU this week. No. They're not going to lose TCU. Yeah, no, I mean, not going to lose. I mean, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. not going to lose. They're you're right. You're at right. Iowa State, and then they have us at home for the mm-hmm. final week. Right. I don't think any of us are picking Tech to win that game that final week right now with what we've seen so far. We want to win that game. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to. I don't think Iowa State's any good mm. with regards to the Big 12 stand in this, in this regard. But it is at Iowa State, so you kind of want to give them a chance. And it's at TCU, who we've beaten this year. And, you know, transient properties don't necessarily apply in college sports. But I'm going to let them apply here. That I think we're better than TCU, and I don't think we're going to beat Texas at their place. So I guess by default, I'm saying it's Texas and Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. Okay, so... Most likely to knock them out. At TCU would be their one loss, but then they'd still be five and two for Texas, which would still be enough to be above Kansas and Kansas State. Eight. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me jump in here. Okay, I'm pretty much with Jeff on everything what he's saying. Okay, I, I, I first off, I, I think it's gonna be Texas and Oklahoma State. Okay. I disagree with you on the best chance for Texas to lose. I think the best chance for Texas to lose is at Iowa State. It just seems like one of those crazy. They're not going to lose to TCU. They're, they're, they're just not. Just like they take TCU serious, they're going to take us serious. Iowa State's a different deal on the road. You just never know. You just never know up there. Okay? So I, I think that's the most likely way, even though I don't think it's likely, that's the most likely way that Texas gets bounced. Okay. Well, the interesting part about that is if Texas gets bounced, all right, and they drop to their five, they would have two losses. Okay. So Oklahoma, if they don't lose out, or I mean, if they win out, they would have the same record as Texas and they beat Texas head to head. So Oklahoma could overtake Texas. But wait. That's not all. If Iowa State won the game against Texas, they would also only have two losses if they win out. How in the world is Iowa State in the mix? Okay, I don't think Kansas State... Kansas State has lost to both Texas and Oklahoma State, so they, they they don't have the tiebreaker against either one of them. Okay, so Kansas would have a shot. If Kansas beat Kansas State... Who's the other two games for KU, Chuck? I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay, Tech, uh, Kansas State, and they play they play Kansas State next week in Lawrence, and then they play at Cincinnati the Saturday okay. after Thanksgiving. So Kansas and Iowa State have a shot. Okay, I I I, I will be shocked if it's not Texas and Oklahoma State, but I want one of these Kansas Iowa State teams to somehow sneak in there. I think that would be so much fun. 
This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. 8.15 this morning here on the Morning Drive is a football Friday presented by Abundance Energy, and we're going to shift to football. football Friday. Yes, football yeah. Friday. We have uh, this on the Visual Edge IT Hotline, the head soccer coach of Texas Tech Athletics, Tom Stone. Good morning, Coach. Morning, Jen. Well, let me ask you this first. What do you like about your team as you head into postseason play? Oh, all of it. I think the spirit of them, the health, relative health that we've been able to maintain, the young players fighting hard, the old players, the veteran players being leaders. I mean, you know, after 20 games, there's a, there's a lot to like about this group. Obviously, you know, it's a it's a game-by-game game deal now. There's no moral victories and no – chances to to be looking forward or back it's just what's right in front of you is a game against a really good team and we hopefully can uh can play well tonight coach 15 one and four on the season heading in i feel like you're a pretty positive guy but also a a realist did did you think you your team heading into the season had a chance to be this good you know I, i did believe honestly did believe we had a chance to be this good but what it's hard to translate that into an undefeated regular season you know, to to say to your closest friends, like, hey, man, we're going to be good. This team's got a lot. Uh, that that you can do. But then to, to, can you imagine walking around with my friends going, dude, we're going undefeated. Like, nobody says that out loud anyway. So that was great. And that was a wonderful experience. And, you know, I mean, as Blair Quinn said, he's been coaching in college for 25 years. He's never had an undefeated season. So, And he's been at some great places and won championships. So it's a rare deal to uh, be on that kind of run and, Maybe, maybe uh, you know, dropping one before the end of the the Big 12 stuff was over was good for us because uh, we didn't like that feeling, and hopefully that's kind of recentered us for this opportunity now. Uh, Coach, you know the thing that kind of stood out to me um, when I when I was looking at some notes is it's it's been since 2019 since you guys have played in the NCAA tournament. If you had asked me what year, I said, oh, they were there last year. I mean, but maybe that's just my you know, lack of knowledge, but just perceptually, you guys Maybe. have always have always had a very, very good program. But uh, it's got to be exciting to you to 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 bounce back like this and put this team together. Is this a? Do you think this is a special collective team culture wise too? Oh, they have to be because there's been too many times when we've made things happen when it looked dire or we scored goals in the waning moments or we never lost our belief or we felt like maybe we'd been done wrong a little bit during the game and, and we had to bounce back from, from some adversity. That you, you, you just can't have those things happen over and over and over unless there's some good culture. And that's been getting built, you know, for years. And, you know, as far as the NCAA thing, we never acted like we weren't at that level because we have been. And in 20, we would have been – we were the unanimous pick to win the league. You know, we were the preseason favorite – but COVID took it from us. We didn't even get to finish. And you may have heard me say this before, but the reason I don't like telling that story is because the way worse than us was Tadlock's situation with like eight, you know, Major League Baseball players on his team, and he he lost his whole season. But we didn't even get to finish ours. So we'd have been in that year, and the next two years we had some really devastating injuries, and we got everybody back. And so we've kind of behaved like we were a tournament team, and we've pushed for those, and we've been 10 wins and 11 wins, and we've been close. So – uh, this year was literally just an extension of great health and availability and certain players like Macy Blackburn and Hannah Anderson and Ashley Williams just having career, you know, seasons. They've all just been fantastic. And we got the best keeper in the country. So when the planets line up, you got to seize those opportunities. And uh, this year they lined up for us, and I feel like we really wrapped our arms around it and, and gave it everything we had. Coach, you just touched on it there a little bit, and Madison White, it, it feels like you guys have some great goal scorers that – kind of get the headlines, but how important is it to have a veteran like Madison in the goal? It, it's everything. I mean, Madison was capable of making the same saves as a freshman that she makes now, but she's so much more calculated now, so much more rational, mature, uh, vocal, knows what to say. It's just she's a grown-up. I mean, it's awesome. And uh, same thing with Alex Kerr coming in from Vanderbilt. You know, we, we didn't just get somebody that could score 10 goals. We got a grown-up. I mean, she's an adult in the room. She's done all the things. She's graduated from Vanderbilt. She's won two championships in the SEC. I mean, she just brought so much maturity to us, and we feel the same way about Madison. You know, her and Hannah have been have been the big time back there, and probably the most overrated one. And I'll just say her name because no one ever asked about her is Cassie Taylor. I mean, that kid's a rock. Um, she is an absolute rock. I'll give you a great stat, guys. We have not lost a regular season Big Twelve game since last year, 
when we moved Cassie Taylor to the back. Not one game have we lost, and that's like, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, plus non-conference. We're over 20-something games that we haven't lost with Cassie Taylor joining hand in the back, so that's pretty good, too. Well, what took you so long to move her to the back, Coach? <laughs> Uh, I ask myself that every day. <laughs> <laughs> We're visiting with uh, Tom Stone this morning. His uh, soccer team, the Texas Tech Red Raiders, will take on Florida Gulf Coast tonight. The first kick, first touch, excuse me, is at 6 o'clock over at John Walker. Uh, what concerns you about Florida Gulf Coast, uh, Coach? Uh, a couple things. One is they're used to winning. You know, they've won their conference eight times, and they're used to being in this position. I think they're used to having first-round games against Florida State, which is routinely the number one team in the country and right down the road from them. So I think they're looking at this as an opportunity they haven't had. And their coach, he's a vet. He's been around 20-plus years in the college game. He's going to have a plan for us. We know Jimmy well. So this isn't some young upstart coach who's going to come in with his eyes wide open. I mean, he's going to be – focused and his team's gonna I think have a pretty good idea of what they're dealing with and it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game I told the team this week like look we didn't get the easiest game we didn't get the hardest game you know there's some harder games out there but there are definitely some easier ones and Florida Gulf Coast is going to take all we've got to to advance coach I know you're focused on Florida Gulf Coast but what was your take on the fact that you guys won the Big 12 championship and BYU got the number one seed and and you got the number two you know, as I understand it, it was neck and neck. You know, um, their RPI was higher than ours most of the year, which is that obviously the mathematical formula. And if there was a big separator, it you would think it might have been that we tied them at their place, which is tough to do with sure. 6,000 screaming fans at every game. But they had the separator win, which was UCLA had been number one in the country for like seven weeks, and they beat them three to one. And I think that victory probably swayed – the committee to that point and you're right we we're not looking towards any of that we can't we'd be so naive to do but the one thing i'll say about them being the number one on, on our side mm -hmm. is that uh you know that's the number one that's known that's the number one that's that's familiar and uh you know that's the number one that's not called florida state or penn state or stanford or any of those teams that we haven't seen so whoever gets out of our bracket um is going to have a heck of a tough game to get to get the Provo and get a win, but at least if it happened to be us, we would we would be familiar with it. Eight twenty two this morning on the morning drive. You're known as a pretty good speaker, as a pretty motivator and things like that. What's the any any secret motivational thing that you're going to do for the for your team today? Like, are you going to you know burst through the locker room? You're going to wave your hands. You got secret coin. You got what do you what do you got for us, coach? Well, I think you guys definitely have figured out that if I had anything like that, I would not be telling you. <laughs> because, number one, I don't need your judgment, Heinz. Okay. Number two, and I'm just kidding. And number two, I just feel like those things are always best done in-house. They don't, you know, not sure. everything should be for social media. But I will answer your question and say nothing. This team is hyped. They're ready to go. I'm not, I don't have anything special planned. I think you can overhype your team in these situations, and that works against you, too. You know that first huge crowd we had this year when there was nowhere to sit and there was a couple thousand people there? It took us 20 minutes to calm down and pass the ball. So we just want the team to take care of itself. The veterans will lead, lead in the locker room in that regard, but no, nothing special. Maybe that's the message, Coach. Maybe you can say, hey, I had this clown this morning on the radio go, what kind of secret <laughs> trick are you going to do to get this team out of it? You know what I told them? Nothing. We're ready to go. Let's go. It's like a Seinfeld episode. What are you going to say to your team? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I just just want you to know, Coach, if you do mention the clown to your team and you win, when one. you win, yeah. he will take credit. <laughs> yeah. And I thought you were going to say, make it clear who I was talking about. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, they, they know. They, they know. <laughs> well, listen, uh, for, uh, first potentially three, but you can only win one today. So yes, go sir. get them, Coach. Thank you for your time. We'll do our best. Thanks, guys. That's uh, Tom Stone here with us this morning on the Visual Edge IT Hotline. His team takes on Florida Gulf Coast tonight. It'll be at 6 o'clock at John Walker. First touch at 6. So I uh, hope there's a great crowd tonight for his team and uh, obviously hope that they get a, a victory tonight over Florida Gulf Coast. Send them, send them back to their beach, right? This has been the Morning Drive Podcast presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.